Welcome to my presentation on using BEEP in higher education institutions and vocational beekeeping training. Uh, my name is Marco van Hees and I'm your host for the next seven minutes. Uh, well, let me introduce uh, myself a little bit. Um, I'm a lecturer at uh, the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences um, at the Faculty of Engineering. Um, I'm also a founder and owner of uh, a Dutch uh, beekeeping academy, a small beekeeping acad academy. Uh, it's called uh, Imker School. It's a bit difficult to pronounce probably for most English, but uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a, a beekeeping academy. And I have a small family uh, apiary also. It's called Florencia. Then uh, I'm also a researcher at uh, two centers of expertise. Uh, one is urban technology and urban governance in Amsterdam. And I'm an expert and coach at, at a Dutch NGO, uh, working in various uh, emerging countries, um, which is uh, and, and PERM is founded by uh, the Dutch uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also an entrepreneurship um, uh, trade organization. Well, um, I'm using uh, the beep. Uh, I think it's relevant uh, to use the beep in three ways in education. First of all, is for vocational training of beekeeping with my small beekeeping academy. Then, secondly, I try to involve my engineering students um, uh, in the relevant uh, technology in various ways, which I will explain uh, in a in a, uh, in a few minutes. And uh, thirdly, I think uh, it might be also interesting to look at. Uh, uh, possibilities in emerging countries. However, surprising, but I think there's quite some interest there. Well, here are some of my students. As you can see, they are very beginning students because uh, their suits are still very white. Uh, as you know, as beekeepers, uh, this will uh, not take very long. Uh, but um, they all look very happy and uh, pleased, of course, uh, at the start of a course. And uh, hopefully they will finish and become beekeepers soon. Um, then, well, what do I do in vocational uh, beekeeping or what are the benefits actually of using the beep in, in um, vocational beekeeping? Well, first of all, I think it enhances the transparency of what people are doing, what my students are doing, not just for themselves, but also for me as a teacher. It's very easy to, uh, to look and to see uh, what uh, the differences uh, are between students, uh, how they evolve, uh, what did they do. Uh, and also to give them feedback based on that transparency. I think that's uh, that's uh, quite interesting. Uh, also because I have my apiaries um, spread over a, a, a larger region uh, with different groups of students, uh, this is uh, very helpful. Then it also stimulates and motivates students, I believe, uh, because they can compare and benchmark between each other. And um, yeah, they discuss among each other the developments based on what they see and what they put into the system. Then uh, thirdly, I believe uh, it makes the preparations uh, much more relevant and interesting also because, of course, uh, in, in a normal setting, uh, you would uh, enter into the hive and then look at, um, look at the administration of each hive separately on a piece of paper. But uh, it makes it, uh, the beep makes it very easy to actually prepare at home for both of the, for the students. Uh, as well as for me, but also before entering into the uh, apiary, uh, we can easily discuss the different uh, uh, different situations um, and then go into the hive. So it makes it uh, a lot less uh, uh, intrusive. Then it uh, improves the effect monitoring of the interventions, of course, because obviously it's it's giving you a lot more information also, um, and it uh, reduces needless intrusive interventions. It also raises the awareness of, of these uh, intrusive interventions in the beehive, um, which is one of the most important things I have to learn actually for beginning students, uh, because of course they are very curious, which is very much understandable. But uh, one of the first things I think students have to learn is that they should be a little bit more reluctant to, uh, to, to uh, these invasive uh, actions, yeah, because it does have a really negative impact on on the bees in general. Um, then, of course, yeah, it, the whole idea of uh, condition-based uh, ma maintenance and predictive maintenance uh, is, of course, uh, possible uh, with uh, having the data uh, available, uh, which in a normal setting would not be the case. Uh, there are some challenges, of course. Well, first of all, I think not all students um, um, are equally literate or have enough knowledge of uh, technology. 
or even want to use technology because uh, well let's be honest I, I mean beekeeping for many people uh, is like a very ancient uh, skill and it, uh, and it and it refers to well working with nature and for many people technology is something quite different uh, so some of them are very reluctant to use technology but um, um, I think if they see the benefits then uh, it's much easier to uh, to make people understand that it uh, really can be very helpful and it does actually um, uh, lead to an improvement uh, and, and to more biodiversity but it takes some effort of course to discuss uh, these subjects with some people and of course it requires some discipline to put in the data uh, correctly but uh, this is also in a normal setting on a piece of paper uh, it also requires discipline to to do the administration uh, correctly Okay, then secondly, uh, I would like to explain you something about how I involve my students from the university. Here's a small group of students working on their thesis actually for electronics. And, um, but I, I, I try to involve many different students from very different areas, um, which I would like to show you here. Yeah, so, as, uh, so since 2018, 2019, um, I'm, I'm trying to in involve uh, these students. Uh, and they have a very different background, as I said. Uh, some are, of them are from business engineering. Uh, other ones are um, have a background in uh, applied math, for example, or data science. Um, and some are electronics uh, students. So I involve them in many different ways, many different subjects. And um, like this year, um, we had a project on quality management. And uh, 100 uh, students made an assignment and uh, well actually the subject was about uh, s using Six Sigma which is very much based in, in, a, in a production environment usually uh, but with some uh, creativity it's very easy to see the beehive as a small production unit um, and uh, generating data of course production data um, with regard to the weight and also with regard to the vitality and health of a beehive uh, which can be you know uh, compared to the uh, vitality or well not the health but but to the status of of, uh, of, a, of a factory or the equipment in a factory uh, it's it's it takes some uh, some creativity but uh, uh, with regard to the data they can learn a lot and to uh, by analyzing these data and even uh, students in technology uh, technology and entrepreneurship uh, they are very much uh, involved in, for example, you know, working on uh, different business cases um, and uh, business models uh, for uh, smart beehives. New, te you know, introducing technology um, in uh, everyday life. So, what's next? Uh, next on the program is a hackathon, um, and this hackathon is about biodiversity and climate change. Uh, but also involves uh, working uh, with uh, improvements with regard to beehive monitoring. Uh, the benefits uh, for these students is I think that it offers them new perspectives and much more awareness on, on you know, the broad range of technology applications and entrepreneurship with regard to, uh, to technology. Uh, then also uh, it very easily links to the sustainable development goals, which I believe you know, every student should actually uh, become um, uh, acquainted with so um, I use um, I use this also in uh, in lectures uh, with regard to sustainability and uh, even uh, circular uh, business so um, then also as I explained before it relates to many different subjects uh, for engineering students uh, including maintenance quality management sustainable business models data science etc and I think last but not least it um, it, it inspires and activates uh, students by means of hackathons it um, they have to step out of their comfort zone because they you know very often focus on on a very classic image of uh, of business and i think you know by just uh, stepping out of their comfort zone and getting out of the building and looking at you know send what what sensors and technology can do in this area uh, they broaden their horizon and they actually learn and get inspired in a different way uh, of course they have a very often a limited background in in beekeeping so it requires uh, some extra time and effort to understand uh, everything what's going on and not each student really wants to get you know go into uh, in depth so that uh, that's, that's sometimes a challenge but mostly this is is quite easy 
Um, and um, well, stepping out of the comfort zone is not so easy for all people. So that's why I think it's also a little bit of a challenge. But what's next in this uh, area? Um, with a, a new project I'm working on, a research project, it's called Urban Good Camp. We try to uh, further research and develop educational activities aimed at uh, creating, accelerating and upscaling uh, integrated solutions for climate resilience and urban biodiversity. And I think uh, the BEEP will be very helpful to address these subjects and we can do a lot more projects uh, like these. Uh, then thirdly, I promised you to you know, give you a brief introduction on what I do uh, in emerging countries. This is a picture of me in uh, Nepal actually with some beekeepers and uh, a whole group of beekeepers uh, which I trained um, and um, I think there was quite a lot of interest in you know, working with uh, new technology, although this is the, one of the poorest countries in the world. I mean, they seem to be very eager to learn and, 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 and even work with, uh, with new technology, even there. And I, I think there are some, um, also some initiatives in Africa, uh, in Kenya specifically, but I'm, I'm not um, enough aware of this. This is uh, actually um, the National Innovation Center in Kathmandu. And, um, well, also in this area, there's engineering students working here from the university. Um, and they, they, they are quite interested if I tell them about, uh, you know, all the possibilities uh, using sensors in beehives. So, um, yeah, what's next here? Um, I, I can't tell you uh, because I like to discuss this uh, and I'm very curious and interested in what the possibilities are. Um, with regard to using beekeeping technology for coaching and also for uh, for new entrepreneurs in emerging countries. So uh, I'm open to your information. Uh, if you would like to contact me, these are my contact details. Please uh, have a look at my LinkedIn profile and connect with me. I will be very happy uh, to discuss further. Thank you very much and hope to uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, of the day. Thank you.